Hello and welcome back to Deck Pilot. This week I'm taking Red Yellow Combat Burn for a spin on the ladder. I'm a very big fan of this deck. Um, it's one of my favorite archetypes. Unfortunately, it's fallen off in recent times. It's not as powerful as it used to be, but still, you know, it's a deck you have to respect. It can deal a lot of damage out of nowhere with the Scourge Train Spectres being haste creatures. And of course, that Kaleem's training in Flashwind can turn any of your creatures into a flying menace. So let's get into the matches and see how it performs. All right, we're going up against Cassio in this match. I've never played Cassio's before, so I'm not sure entirely what he's playing. I decided to keep a Grim Guard and a Ground Shaker this time. I'd rather play, I guess I'd rather play Grim Guard instead of Ground Shaker on the play, unless he plays a creature which I can remove. Got Sturdy Shell, so this could be Dream Reaver, potentially. I'm actually going to challenge the Sturdy Shell. I, well, it depends. I'll be honest, it does depend on which way he decides to go with his next land. He may start summoning stuff on this side, uh, which... Yeah, I, I... We'll see. We'll see what happens next. So, n nothing on this side. Okay, so we are going to go... Down this way. And I am going to Ground Shaker now instead of Grimguard. And the reason is because Grimguard dies to an enchantment, whereas uh, Ground Shaker doesn't. And it makes the enchantment worse uh, for the Sturdy Shell. Now, Sturdy Shell is probably going to sit here. This kind of just stops. My opponent from just swimming off to this side and do what they want. And this, this is Dream Reaver for sure. Uh, this is These two cards feature a lot in Dream Reaver lists. Nice. Okay. So we are going to move up. And then we're going to Grimguard behind. So Grimguard is going to collect off this well. Uh, Grand Chick is going to collect off this well. And we do have the option of Flash Wind next turn. So I'm just trying to apply as much pressure as I can uh, to this well here. Now, if he says, let's say he goes Lake into another Herald, I have a Ground Shaker and a Clear on that. I can't really chase this down, unfortunately, because I want to build a Desert to get the Flash Wind. So if he builds land, I, I can then chase it down uh, with the Ground Shaker. He's thinking about something. It's a tough situation to be in. I'm, like I said, I'm already applying a lot of pressure here. You've just you just summoned your ancient herald on the left, so we can't really defend. Uh, you can see like ancient heralds now moving in. And the zero cost sturdy shell behind. Now this library. So library's interesting when you play Red Yellow Boom because library can help you win. You can win faster with library with the right hand. But this hand specifically, I don't think I'm going to be winning faster. So I am just going to move up and pass. I could flame burst it actually. Yeah, let's flame burst it. Now if I had Kaleem's training... Maybe if I had, like, Kaleem's training or that Ancient Herald wasn't there, I might have left it up, but I don't think we can leave a library up at this point. Right now, right now we, are the, we are the aggressors. We have initiative. The moment we start giving our opponent more cards and more Feria, the easier it is for them to respond to our pressure. So killing the library in that situation is definitely correct, I would say. Phantasm. And an Empress Command. Oh, Frogify, okay. Very strong play there. 
two transform effects though. I, I, I'll take it. And I'm not drawing anything good. <laughs> ah, it's, just, it's absolute garbage. The moment I, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe I'm gonna have to do this. I, sh I should have played him. I shouldn't have drawn. I, I should have probably just mounted here and ground shake a Cypher's Wrath. Now I need to use more resources, and I don't have an aggressive spot for ground shaker. I, I, I we probably just wait at this point. I mean, I, I guess I actually I could just move back here and do it this way. That, that that's not too bad. Cause I still have the flash winds, I guess. So if I pick up a train in, I'm in a good spot. I do need to kill that sturdy shell. That that's that's for sure. So if I do get a train in, I might not even go aggressive. I might just go to like the middle, and then up and clear, or I can go here, here here and clear and then put myself into double collection speak of the devil this has moved away from me now I can still collect off this well I can I can collect two feria Move, flash, wind, flash. So move, flash, wind, flash, wind. I, I, the, the two flash winds can give me some resources. Now, I, what I could do alternatively is miss a feria, go here with the train in, flash, wind here, clear this, flash, wind here, and develop an aggressive mountain. I quite like that. I like applying the pressure here. Gives me another Scourge Flame avenue for the future. But I can attack from two sides now, which uh, I think is... Could be quite valuable against a, a slow control deck like this. And now he needs another Frog of Fire, another Phantasm. One or the other. And we've seen one of each. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping there isn't another Frogify. I'm in massive trouble if there was. No, he's thinking. He's one land away from Dream Reaver. So maybe he's weighing up. Is it worth playing a defensive Dream Reaver at this point? I mean, you could you could defensive Dream Reaver here, just deal ten damage to me, move the Ancient Herald back, and then I need another Flash Wind to kill the Herald, and then I'd have a, a seven ten in front of me, which would be very hard to to take care of. So he's gonna block with the Herald. I wonder if he has anything else to go with that, and a Beiru. Beiru is very powerful. Especially against decks that don't run Transformer Hard Removal. Like this deck. If you remember, if you remember deck Doctor and Pilot from last week when I did Blue Jump. Beiru can be a big problem. That's not what I want to see. And that's not really what I want to see either. All right, we're going to clear the board. We're actually going to taunt this Beiru to try and push six damage next turn. And uh, by doing this line, I've stopped my opponent from collecting any Faria this turn unless this, unless both of these get removed. Now you could, could Aurora's trick this? Aurora's trick would be pretty brutal but i'm i'm kind of hoping he just has to run into the grim guard he doesn't have enough fit, any, anything he can play this turn and i can run the six one into his orb 
I'm probably never going to kill this in this match. So I just need to deal as much damage as I can. So this is going to give me two. The thing is, he's playing Dream Reaver, so he, he has good ways to heal. Oh, the Ninja Toads. So, that's so sad. Alright, so it's kind of just starting from be the beginning. So just rebuilding. So I'm building towards the center now because I want Beirut to have to move into an awkward position. If I was to build land here, Beirut could just shimmy over and kill that land next turn. Beirut's gonna see. I'm I'm forcing Beirut to move to the middle. I'm just making I'm making so he doesn't collect any ferrier. Once Beirut moves into this slot, I'm gonna lose all these lands anyway. But if I draw, well, even if I draw a scourge flame, it's got not gonna be enough. I am a bit starved of Feria, unfortunately. Battle Toads would be really good for him right now. No play. Okay, so my lands are protected for a turn, and that gives me a draw. That's a Grim Guard. Alright, we're just going to sit here. And then Beirut's going to shimmy into the center. And I'm just praying I draw that Scourge Flame. For next turn. And he's sitting on seven fairy and a full hand of cards. It's gonna be very difficult for me to win from this point. Right, Scourge Flame is pretty much my only out. And that's assuming he doesn't have a Dream Reaver to just reset his health back to 10 on the next turn. I guess I have time. Like, I haven't taken any damage myself. He hasn't applied any pressure. So perhaps... Perhaps I start building lands over this way now. Unless I pick up Gift of Steel. If I pick up Gift of Steel, I'm in a pretty good spot. Because I can Gift of Steel uh, Cypher's Wrath. That, 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 that should be perfect. So Gift of Steel or Scourge Flame are the two cards I want. That's assuming there's no Frogify or anything like that. That's a Dream Reaver. That's a Dream Reaver kind of out of the way, which is fine. Oh man. I have Flame Burst Cyphers on this to protect my lands. It's just so miserable. Ah, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Ah, oh, this is awful. Throwing another flame burst away. Now I'm on 10 health. So an enchant or ninja toad. It's going to happily finish me off. I protected my lands. That's, that's pretty good. I've been able to protect my lands here. Definitely a benefit. I really wanted Gift of Steel because it meant my Brute survived and potentially pushed an extra 2 damage. Now I can get an aggressive land here or here next turn. Lake into Water Elemental. Okay, so he's he's kind of he's pushed up really far. And he is going to put the land there. That's that's really good for us because now I can go Grimguard here, or I can go Cipher. There's also a Scourge Flame. Let's work this out. What's going to deal the most damage for me? I need I need one I need one Desert to Scourge Flame next turn. I spend four fairy, I'll have two fairy remaining. I go up to three. I'm not going to be able to scourge flame. I need to kind of kill. I need to kill as quickly as possible. My scythe is probably the best because if I pick up gift of steel, that one shots him. 
But again, it's the same with the Grim Guard. If I pick up Gift of Steel, uh, he gets put up to a five, seven. No, so he doesn't. So Cypher is the play. So I'm kind of all in on Cypher Flame Burst, Cypher Gift of Steel. I don't really have time, unfortunately, to wait on Scourge Flame, I don't feel. Because Scourge, Scourge Flame Gift of Steel is lethal as well. So it's kind of the same, really. They both represent the same amount of damage. I guess the, the only difference is now Cassio can frogify this cipher. Yeah, so that, that, that probably makes Scourge Flame stronger. Yeah, I'm going to get frogified. Okay, so I, I should have taken that into consideration. I still have time, just not much of it. Okay, how do I win now? Um, <laughs> two damage to the Grim Guard. Uh, two damage to his all from hitting the Grim Guard with the Dream Reaver. Takes him down to four. And if he plays anything, well, it doesn't matter, unfortunately. Wait, what's he got? Oh, yes, of course, of course. And there we have it. That's, uh, that's losing to Dream Reaver. It's a bit, there's a Radiant Sir on top of that. Really tough game. Uh, the, the, the double sturdy shells, the ancient heralds, like, the, the problem, the problem Red Yellow Burn has, if it just draw, if it doesn't draw the right combination of cards in certain situations, it can just be an incredibly passive deck that doesn't do anything. Maybe I'm playing it wrong, I don't know. I, I've played a lot of this deck, but yeah, Dream Reef is definitely one of the more difficult matchups, mainly because they can heal so much. There's just so much healing with the Radiance, with the Dream Reavers, if they're in an Emperor's Command as well, or Healing Song. There's lots of ways the deck can heal, and it just ends up being a very difficult match. All right, our next match is against Holy Lotus. I'm gonna keep the training. That's, that's pretty good. That, that gets me doing something quite early on. I've played Holy Lotus a fair amount of times over the past few weeks. That's going to be a lake, so probably blue jump. And we'll play the brute. No need to play the grim. Um, sorry, the grand shaker here because the one damage we might want to do to a creature. Say War Elemental comes down, uh, Grand Shaker Cypher's Wrath can be an option in the future. Spell will and the battle. All right, so we Cypher's Wrath this one because then it doesn't collect off our, our well and reduce that Colossus. There we go. Now if you pick up Flashwind next turn, we're in an amazing position. We can go, uh, we can go straight in. And apply some pressure. Could probably even just kill the Sanctuary. So we're going to do this. We're going to Grind Shaker. We're also going to train in this anyway. I'm going to put it on this well. So we're just, we're just applying pressure at this point. I like doing this sometimes because now, now Holy Lotus has to think, well, this Brute is going to hit me next turn or, or I need to, or it's going to clear something. So I just want to make life difficult for Holy Lotus as, as much as possible. He he gave up on a on a Feria there. Which is really good. Alright, nothing exciting unfortunately. I can I can play Grand Shaker. Which I'm fine with doing. Another training. Oh man. Not giving me the flash wins, unfortunately. If I had one more Feria, I could clear the board. I could train in this, and I could Ground Shaker, and I would only have this. Only the Sanctuary would be left. 
which would be really strong against blue because they need they need initiative on board to, to do anything. So I'm thinking just playing another Grand Shaker. And then maybe I hit this anyway. I could move back, I suppose, and, and train, train in this to finish it off. But to be honest, I feel that... Actually, moving back's not that bad. Because now he's blocked himself with the Sanctuary. So yeah, I'll just, I'll just move back. So he needs... He needs Prophet of the Tide to clear this. It's a little dangerous. But what, what, what were my alternatives, I guess? I could have went to the middle of the board. That was an alternative. That's a Beiru. And that's a library. Do I want to use this library to my advantage? The last game, I let I, I killed library. This game I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kill the library. I'm gonna let's let's see what outcome we get from leaving the library alone. Because now he needs Emperor's Command to... to kill my Brute. Or he needs Frogify. If he Frogifies, I'm very happy. And I can just play Grimguard on the center next to him. Decides to take the Feria. What's that? That's a Herald. And the Emperor's Command? Yeah, there we go. As, as to be expected, Emperor's Command showing up there. Grimguard. So the, the fact that he Emperor's Commanded my creature basically just means that I stopped for healing from this library. So leaving this library up became more valuable at that point. So we're going to be a land behind for a little while, but I don't mind too much. Because we'll use the Grim Guards. We'll use the Grim Guards to, um, to hold this Beiru off and deal damage. Spell will. Hopefully not into anything too exciting. Like frog Frogify and this is probably worth it. The fact that he's locked into this place, into place here for a turn, just gives me time to set up an additional, an additional land. Another Emperor's Command on my Grand Shaker. Now that's really good for me. Again, the healing has been left behind. It's a Ludoan. Good old Ludoan. He's made his appearance once again. So I like, I like Brute Grimguard here. I Grimguard on this location, I Brute on this location, and then I just pass, I believe. Actually, I probably just, this is probably gonna die, so I wanna, I can push up, I can always move back if I need Feria. So Library takes him down to six. So I, I kinda need to hope there's no Radiance. If there's no Radiance, I'm gonna be in a good spot. If there is a Radiance, I'm probably gonna be in a lot of trouble. Now, you can opt for orb damage this turn with the Beiru. But he's got to respect the fact that I can deal 4 damage with just my combat creatures, plus the library damage, plus the flame burst in hand. So a lot of output going next turn. And I've kind of moved my lands... I've shimmy my lands across by using Grimguard as a, a taunter to stop Beiru being as effective as he can be. I mean, you saw last game, like, they might have had to invest into that Beiru because I was going to lose all my lands, but Grimguard kind of helped things out a bit there. 
Mirror Phantasm. So having the Phantasm there to trade, to make sure he doesn't take the damage, but that's going to be lethal. Uh, it doesn't matter which way I do it. This library is going to finish him off, and I pick up the extra Flame Burst anyway. Run it into the Bay Ridder to deal two damage, and bam! We beat a blue deck by leaving the library up this time. So perhaps that was my mistake. I should have left the library up against the Dream Reaver. And then that way, I could have uh, maybe killed him a little faster. You know, sometimes I think you have to assess whether leaving the library up will lose the game. But probably most cases, the red, yellow burn, leaving it up just accelerates your win condition, which is always great. That wraps up this episode of Deck Pilot. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys give this deck a shot because it is a lot of fun. If you do like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and of course subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date of when my content goes live on this channel. If you haven't already, check out theory.com slash the hyphen hub for more articles, decks, and guides from myself and the community. So until next time, guys, take care and have a great day.